I want to switch uh, gears and talk a little bit about climate change, energy transformation, infrastructure. Jennifer Grancio is here. She is the head of global wealth for TCW. TCW recently bought Engine Number no. One. You might remember them, the company. They became famous for winning three seats on the board of Exxon with a demand to take climate change more seriously. And I wanted to bring Jennifer back for an update. Uh, and last we spoke, what was it, six months ago? I wasn't at the, uh, the conference in, in California. Uh, TCW had just bought engine number one. You, the three ETFs, you went along with them that you managed. Uh, what's the difference? Is there any difference in engine number one and TCW? Has the management different or the same? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> TCW is it's a great firm that's known today for fixed income, but they've got a heritage in active equity. And so, you know, more resources against the same three great strategies. Now, there's three ETFs here. We're going to put them up because I want to make sure that, and you brought them over. Uh, the Transform Systems ETF, NETZ, the Transform 500, that's the vote, and the Transform Supply Chain, Transform Supply Chain, that's SUPP. Um, but there, there seems to have been some subtle changes. Though. The old climate change ETF is now called the Transform Systems ETF, NETZ. Here, I'm putting up some of the largest um, holdings here for them, including Republic Services, as you can see, and Union Pacific. Uh, it, the old one seemed to be more focused on climate, and, and, and this one seems more focused on the energy transition to net zero carbon emissions. The website describes this as brown to green companies, for example. So is there a subtle difference between this one and the old nets? And, and tell us what's going on here. In this yeah, one. I mean, I think if, if you think about the, the huge transformation that we're seeing in energy and power and how we consume energy and power, as well as how we're more efficient in using them, um, it's going to take a long, long time. And so we initially described it as climate change. We think a better way to describe it is it's the system, right? It's the system on how this changes through time. Um, and we manage it actively. And so as we go through different market cycles, obviously we have different opportunities. So if you look at, for example, energy last year, tough year for energy. A lot of people think about investing in transformation um, in investing only in green. Lithium was down, um, you know, wind was down, solar was down last year. And so if you think about investing through time in the transformation, you really do have to hold these old economy companies and hold the people that are going to win, win, pardon me, win and lead through the transformation. One of the things that I love about the way you guys run money is that while you're known as sort of being activist because of the Exxon deal, you're also active in the sense that you actually just talk to management. You try to get companies to work together. How is that mapping from what you guys did with Exxon and Vote to now, for instance, what you're doing in, 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 in Net Zero? Yeah, so in the, in the Net Z ETF, we hold the energy name still. A, a good example is we often find ways to kind of unlock something from an economic perspective. So if you think about it in energy, Occidental, Exxon, they're building actually economically viable businesses around transformation. <clears throat> Another one is Republic Services, which we hold in the portfolio. You know, it's a garbage company. Yeah, I was about to say, aren't they the garbage company? <laughs> um, yeah. But the garbage company it, it, like, is very well positioned to appreciate in value. And they both have a great fundamental business. It benefits from all the reshoring and manufacturing, which well, we well, also Well, how are the garbage accept. companies? I know waste management always shows up in these kinds it, of things. How does. is that uh, going towards net zero? What are they doing yeah, to make the, it I mean, on your list? Two things. So one is they, they're, they're building green natural gas out of the landfill. So it's a secondary business. It's a very high ROI business for them. So they're making money on that business. The second is from a circular economy perspective, we actually brokered a deal between Republic Services and Coke. Uh, Coke wanted recycled material. Coke had to kind of get to an economic point where Coke could pay the price for recycled material and Republic Service could manufacture it. And that's led to a huge kind of build of recycling centers across the U.S. that Republic is doing. So in a lot of cases, we don't have to be the bad activist because people are getting the joke a little bit. And as an active manager, we're going to hold names in the portfolio where we're just going to make money as we go through right. these transformations. I could see industrial names like GE and uh, garbage companies like Republic Services, but Microsoft is 7%. How did that make it in there? Yeah, so, my, so Microsoft is an enabler of this transition. And so, again, we think about what we do at TCW and the ETFs is they're very broad. These are durable megatrends. They're not, they're not you know, thematic. You hold them for a very long period of time. And so we hold energy. We hold aerospace. Aerospace is a big efficiency play. And we also hold companies like Microsoft that are doing a better job with uh, water and energy efficiency. You yeah. think about data centers, it, those are monsters. Right. And so if Microsoft has a better technology to be more efficient with energy, they're going to get rewarded. And here's that. where AI could possibly come in and helping them analyze things. You get your free AI plug here. <laughs> Every company's an AI company now, might as well. So, But I'm being facetious. But 
you could see how they could apply AI to better analyze. Yeah, that's right. But but this is also, I think, one of the real use cases for active management because, my, to your point, Microsoft just shows up as a tech company or a software company on any given screen, any given index, but when you actually peel away the layers of the onion, you look at some of these enormous mega corporations, some of them are really advancing green causes. Microsoft in particular has probably done more for water infrastructure than any company in the world, and they're not a water company, no. right? So those things, I think, really get unlocked by an active manager who's willing to get under the hood and also to have conversations like you're talking about the example with Coke. I think that's very inspiring and very hopeful to me.